All right, gang, now that we've looked at that applet, let's do one more problem that is in proportion land. And then we're just gonna have a kind of a free for all where we'll read the problem and try and decide are we in mean land or proportion land and then use the rules appropriately. But this one for sure, example 10 in proportion land. No, no need to guess on, on which sampling distribution we're in. But as I read this, let's be on the listen for what is the variable in this problem, okay? According to government data, 22% of American children under the age of six live in households with incomes less than the official poverty level. A study of learning in early childhood chooses an SRS of 300 children. Find the probability that more than 20% of the sample are from poverty households. Be sure to check that you can use the normal approximation. Okay, so a couple of things that I, I wanna point out. If I was trying to figure out if I was in mean or proportion land, um, one of the ways to do that is to figure out what your variable is and decide is it numerical or categorical. If it's numerical, you're in mean land. If it's categorical, you're in proportion land. But another giveaway here is these two numbers. You see these two percentages. As soon as you see percentages, you know that you're going to be in prop land. So I'm just going to start to get us in the habit of recognizing my notes on these margins, I always talk about what land I'm in first. That's the first thing I try and decide. And in terms of the 20% and the 22%, what were we keeping track of? Right, you can see it's children living in households with incomes less than the official poverty level. So when I talk to my 300 children, the thing that I'm gonna keep track of, the variable there, is whether or not that particular child lives in a household with incomes less than the official poverty level. So let me just write that out for us. I know it's a lot because it's a categorical variable, but it, it's good to write out. So this is whether or not right, the child lives in a household with incomes less than the official poverty level. Let me erase that, that's gonna to get too close to my y-axis. So this is definitely categorical, which is another reason to go, okay, I'm in proportion land. All right, I have an SRS of 300 children. All right, so then I have a sample. So immediately that puts me on the sampling distribution for proportions. All right, so as we, we do this, as we go through this, the first thing you wanna find is your population proportion because that's what you wanna build your sampling distribution around. And with all of these problems, you're given two proportions, and you can see it here, there are two proportions. So find the parameter, all right? So I wanna figure out which one of these is the parameter because that's what I wanna build my sampling distribution around. So let's see which one was the parameter. This is 22% of American children. This is 20% of my sample. So I hope you can see here that this number, the 20% is coming from my sample, there's my statistic, which means this guy was my parameter, all right? Start with your parameter. I'm gonna put a smiley face here. Start with your parameter. That's what you wanna build your sampling distribution around. So let's make sure we're really taking note of that, right? The numbers that you're building this, this center and this standard error around, it's off of P, not P prime, all right? So find your parameter first and use it to build your sampling distribution. So let me just put a note. Let's see, where we, can we see all that? Let me scooch this down so we could have that note somewhere. I'm just gonna say find your parameter first and build your sampling distribution using that number. All right, so can we see if I put my pencil here? Okay, so find your parameter first 
and use it to build your sampling distribution. So I found my parameter, it's 22%. I'm going to use that as I build my sampling distribution. Now, before I even go making a sampling distribution, check your normality approximation, all right? You can't do anything if the n isn't there, all right? So we've got to check for normality, and that means we have to go through three assumptions, all right? So we have to check that we have at least 10 successes in this sample, that we have at least 10 failures in this sample, and that our sample size is small relative to our population. All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. Do we have 10 successes? Is n times p greater than or equal to 10? Do we have at least 10 failures? Is n times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10? And then we'll talk about our sample size being small relative to our population. So here we go. Let's see what n times p is, and let's check out what n times 1 minus p is. All right, give me one moment. That one looks funny. Okay, so here we go. Our sample size here was 300, and our parameter was 22%. Okay, so when I crunch 300 times 0.22, let's see what number we get. I'll clear all this out. I am looking at about 66, okay? And then we got 300 times 1 minus 0.22. I'm looking at about 234. Now both of these numbers are greater than or equal to 10, so I'm going to put a check mark here. But again, let's try and contextualize what this is saying. This is saying that if you talk to 300 children, you will have 66, and I'll put in quotes, successes. And why am I putting a success in quotes? Because a success here actually means that the child comes from a household um, with an income less than the official poverty level, right? So 66 kids in a sample of 300, that's what we would expect to see, or that's the frequency count of kids we would expect to see coming from poverty households if we talked to 300 of them. And on the flip of that, out of those 300, we would expect 234 did not come from poverty households. All right, and another thing I just want to mention, we saw it in the previous example, but if you added these two numbers up, they're 300. All right, so again, if, if this 22% parameter is true, and I talked to 300 kids, I think 66 will come from poverty households and 234 won't, right? So I have at least 10 successes and 10 failures. All right, the other thing that we need to check, and I'm gonna start abbreviating this, is our sample size small relative to our population. Okay, now before I put the check mark on it, let's talk about how we would assess this. So you assess this always the same way. Take your sample size, 300, and multiply it by 10. Okay, because we're using something called the 10% rule. So if I do that, I'm going to get 3,000. Now, who was making up our sample this time? We had children. So this is 3,000 children. All right. Do we think there are more than 3,000 children in America? And yeah, it's a pretty safe bet. So let me put here, safe to assume. Oops. that there are more than 3,000, I'll go, yeah, 3,000 children in America. Okay. That doesn't require a big leap. I'm, I'm okay with that. So my sample size is small relative to my population, meaning if I only talk to 300 of them, that's way less than the 10% 
of all children out there, right? So 300, way less than 10% of all American children, which allows us to sample without replacement. All right, so I can get through all of these, and that's huge because what that tells me, and I'm gonna scoot this down just a little bit, or I guess scoot it up just a little bit, is at this point, in terms of my sampling distribution, I know I can put the N there. All right, and I'm real excited about that because they asked me to calculate a probability here, and unless I could put the N, I couldn't do the problem. So let's see what we can do to figure out what the center and the standard error will be. All right, so here we go. The rules say that the center for my population distribution is P, and the standard error follows the formula square root P, one minus P over N. So let's play this out. We had a parameter of 22%. All right, so I'm gonna plug that in for my center, and then I'm gonna do 22%, one minus 22%, and I'm gonna put a 300 here on the denominator. So let me write all of that out for us. So I'm gonna say this is 0.22, and then we're gonna have the square root of 0.22 times its complement, one minus 0.22 over 300. Okay. And let's see what that number is. Oops, let me put this all under a square root, 0 0.22, 1 minus 0 0.22, divide out my sample size, and I'm looking, oh, that is syntax error. Oh, I put two division symbols. There we go. So I have a standard error, or standard deviation for my sampling distribution of around 2.4%. I'm gonna round it to 0.024. So I haven't even gotten to the question they asked me. All I'm trying to figure out is how can I label and scale this, right? And here, here's all the information. So let's go ahead and do this. If I wanted to label it, I'm gonna have sample proportions along the x-axis, all right? So in this case, I, I know that the number under that peak is 22%. And again, just for the sake of doing this, I'll go three up and I'll go three back. That's about right. So let me go get my calculator and then we're gonna scale up that, that x-axis. All right, so here we go. We've got 0.22 and I'll, I'll just round here, plus 0.024. We've got, I'll make it smaller, 0.244. Yeah, it's gonna get pretty cramped again. We've got 268. and I've got 0.292. All right, so again, pretty cramped, but we can still make it work. Now let me go the other way. Let me go three deviations down, so I'll subtract out 0.024. I'm looking at 0.196. Now I've got 0.172. And I'll subtract out another 0.024, and I've got 0.148. Okay, whoo, good. All right, so it's really cramped in there on the x-axis, but it is what it is. Okay, I wanna make sure I label my y-axis. Um, actually, I didn't label my x-axis, so this should be the proportion of children living in poverty households. And because this is in prop land, our units are percentages. Okay. So we've got all of this information. We haven't gotten to the question yet, but let's do it. It says find the probability that more than 20% of the sample are from prov uh, poverty households. All right, so I'm gonna scooch this up so that we have the question just in view there, and then I can go ahead and write the symbols here. So I want capital P with some stuff in parentheses, right? I'm finding a probability, so let's do our notation. We know we'll have the equal sign here, but I want more than 20% of the sample. So this time I want P prime to be greater than 20%, right? 
right? more than 20% of the sample. All right, when I want to calculate probabilities and I'm on the sampling distribution for sample proportions, I'm going to use normal CDF. And in this case, I actually do have a greater than. So I am going to go my number, positive infinity, P, and then the standard error. All right. So let, let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to start with my x-axis. I'm going to go 20%. Let's find it on my x-axis. So it's kind of hard for even me to see my writing. That was 0.196. So I think 0.2 is right around here. All right. So I think this is about 20%. Okay. And that's getting pretty close to one deviation below the mean. And I remember from all of that empirical rule stuff, that would be the 16th percentile. All right, so if this was the bottom 16%, this would be the top 84%. So I think my number is going to be closer to 80%. All right, and I say closer to 80% because this here, if it was actually a z-score of negative 1, I would have 16% to the left and 84% to the right. But I don't quite have 16%. So that's why I'm saying around 80%. That would be my guess, just based on, on my graph. And we'll see how close I am. Okay. But if I'm going greater than... I know this is going to go over to positive infinity, so let's go run this. I'm going to go normal CDF, low, high, mean, standard deviation. So normal CDF. All right, low, high. All right, my mean was 22%, and my standard error was 0.024. Okay, so let's see what we're getting. Let me clear this out. Normal CDF. All right, my low was 0.2, my high was infinity, my center was 22%, and my deviation was 0.024. So yeah, I'm getting pretty darn close to 80%. All right, so here we go. This is gonna be 0. Point, I'll go three decimals, seven, nine, and then eight. So pretty close to 80%, All right? But that's matching what I think in, it just in terms of what I shaded and what I know about z-scores. All right, so with that, we're gonna go to, again, the free-for-all, where I'm not gonna tell you immediately, yes, this is in proportion land, this is in mean land. We're gonna try and look for clues in the words of the problem to help us figure out which sampling distribution we're on. Because right? we really wanna start to decide, am I looking at averages or am I looking at proportions? Do I have a numerical variable or a categorical variable. And when we figure out which type of variable we have, whether it's numerical or categorical, get in one of your columns and stay in it. All right, so if you're in averages or dealing with averages, stay in this column. If you're with dealing with proportions, stay in this column. Don't jump columns, okay? All right, see you in a bit.